All right, well, we opened things up by drawing a Carthage chit. I'm trying to get a little bit of gaming in before uh, I face the terrors of shopping today. And then uh, Carthage, after paying their price, picked this card, which actually cost them a point of stability because their uh, funds are so low after raising those armies. They're going to start their major operation, and it doesn't matter what order you do these in. You can do the miners first. Uh, but I don't know that I have miners I really want to do. I'm going to just be shifting troops, I think. Um, and I'm going to march into this tribe in Baetica. I'm going to take everything with me. Because no matter what, I'll keep control of this after my action. And I flip this over and see what I'm facing. It's a fairly large uh, force. And I'm going to attack it. Um, we'll see if I can knock it out or drive it away or something. Given how much I spent on those troops, I made my attack, I had a plus three modifier. My dice came out not terribly well in my favor. Um, the plus three plus one because I didn't quite have two to one odds. I don't know if you can see in this light. I didn't quite have two to one odds. I had 13, that had a seven. Um, and then a plus two for the leader. Nothing else came into play. There's no cow or anything like that. Well, I can't force all right, let me keep going. Uh, I got a plus three modifier. I reduced my own losses to zero. So I did 20% losses. And that worked out that I did two hits. So they're down to five. Oops. Got to be real careful with these counters. Because the double-sided, the other side's important. And if they flip, it's going to be a problem. Now, I have to withdraw back, not necessarily to where I am. Um... And the problem there is <coughs> that, I mean, I could have done more losses to the Barbarians, but I can't force them to retreat from their space. They're not able to move. They're not allowed to move. They're not destroyed by me saying, oh, you've got to retreat or anything like that. But now I can just go in again with two more movement points and hit them again. And as long as I don't get a really, really bad die roll, I should be able to wipe them out with minimal losses to myself. I just want to point out again the rounding though here, because that's a little weird. 13 strength points for here, five strength points for the barbarians. Well, five goes into 13 twice, you'd think, oh, that's two to one. But no, it's more than halfway to 15, which would be the three to one. So it actually ends up rounding up to the three to one. This is like the OCS system. It's a little annoying. There are, you know, there aren't a lot of combats in this game, though. Uh, you know, so it's not really that big a burden. Combat would be kind of cumbersome with the die rolls, with the calculations you make. He, how many units do I lose if I modify my dice this way? How many do you lose if you modify that way? Um, it would be kind of painful if there was a lot of combat in the game, but there doesn't seem to be. And end of the activation, it took the entire turn to take this space. I actually lost two strength points. My next die roll, the one that I said I would take a bad die roll, was pretty damn bad. Uh, I ended up doing 10% to both with a minus four, so I rolled like a five for them because I didn't want to take any damage from any of this. Um, I'm also pushing some more troops down this way. There isn't a lot to do with those minor moves. You can move a counter or you can do some construction activity. Construction activity in terms of uh, building towns and such. Construction activity costs money. I don't have money with the Carthaginians anymore. So all I'm trying to do right now is to increase my income by growing my, my country. The East got the next pick over here and they paid their buck. Draw a card. This is kind of, this is where I really like the uh, Berg cards, charts, combination. Okay, so I'm going to roll on this Harvest Famine table. Now, this is not going to do much, but when I look at this, well, there it is. And it's going to give me a territory. In this case, Asia Minor. Now, the problem is nobody controls Asia Minor, so it's not going to have an effect. If somebody completely controlled it, they would lose a point of stability. Uh, you know, these minor little effects, but what's nice with the combination cards and charts, uh, I only have to look up one chart for it. I've got this nice card draw for it. I, I just like the way it, it, uh, it combines in terms of ran creating random events rather than just, uh, I, I really just like, say, rolling, you know, I don't know, 
11 to 66 or 111 to 666 dice to generate a random event and then having to follow up through other charts to figure out what it actually does. The cards give you a nice uh, uh, way of generating them quickly, but with the charts you're able to drill down and get more information on them in, in a better way. I, I, I just, you know, I, I, I think I have something against, say, pulling chits for random events or rolling dice for them. It's just not as uh, appealing to me for whatever reason. All right. Um, the East is holding on to this mer uh, Mercenaries card that they've got in their hand. They drew this a while back. They want to use that at the beginning of a turn when they need more troops because Mercenaries go away at the end of the turn. Now, they could use it to build Mercenary Cavalry because Mercenary Cavalry actually converts to regular Cavalry at the end of the turn. When, again, one of these little special weird little rules. This game is full of them. Very, very... Uh, Burgish in that way, no question. I'll try to figure out what to do with the uh, East. And uh, the Seleucids have pushed forward here in Ionia. They captured this town and then ended up paying with a minor move to improve it. They've slipped over this way. They're planning on an attack directly into Greece. The Romans in Pontus are something of a threat to them, so the fact that there's a Greek army here, they kind of bypassed it. This could cause them some problems because the Greeks have the naval control i got to be kind of careful not to get caught out. Um, what am I thinking here? Well, for my minor moves, I rebuilt the town, and I also moved my leader here with an intention to try to take Jerusalem. But I need to build troops for that. And how many activations have I used? I've used one, two, three. I'm only going to get one more, so I'm probably not going to be able to capture uh, Jerusalem this turn though I could use my mercenaries to do so. Hmm. Intriguing choice. Of course, that would be my major move if I used my mercenaries uh, to attack Jerusalem, in which case these guys are at some risk. So I have to be kind of careful. If I make it back to the town, I'm fine. Otherwise, I might face attrition uh, because I don't think I'm going to be able to draw a line uh, going back. Hmm, dangerous. Okay, I looked up and clarified the rules there for myself. Uh, I'm safe right now. I can trace back this way. But if somebody cuts that line, I'm in trouble. And who could cut it? Well, this Greek army could conceivably. Pontians could. Uh, these lights could. All kinds of threats there that I have to keep in mind. Because this light infantry as a minor move could move itself here. And then I'm in a lot of trouble. Well, not so much because then I can trace this way. So you've really got to kind of cut the points in a, in a, in a painful sort of way. But the, if the Greeks pull back far enough, they can cut me. Uh, and then I'd have to use naval transport. For naval transport there, um, I couldn't trace through a port space with an enemy galley. And unfortunately, that's what I'm in right now. I'm essentially blockaded right now, I believe. I think that's the intention of the way it works. We'll see. All right, so Pontus got the next activation. They just wiped out a Greek uh, militia or garrison and then pulled back. Um, I didn't have a lot of movement points with them. They don't have a leader, so it's kind of painful for them to move. <coughs> um, but by doing so, they took Galatia away from the Greeks. That's no longer a Greek province. Even though the Greek... Oh, no, it is. The Greeks are the only person there. Okay. Yeah, it was an excess piece. Well, that was kind of a waste. I could have marched all the way down here and attacked into Galatia here, which probably would have been wise. Uh, but then the Greeks would own Pontus instead. And, you know, it just makes things kind of... What do you want to give them? What do you not? I don't know. I want to see what happens. Um, Pontus itself doesn't really supply much. Basically, these are the forces Pontus is going to have for the rest of the game, those Romans. And they don't really need to hold their home country anymore. All right. After Pontus went, we got another Eastern activation up here, and here I was able to figure out what to do cleverly. Uh, I played the Mercenaries card, I marched down and took Judea, I took losses on the Mercenaries, but no big deal, I'm going to lose them. Oops. Uh, danger of flipping counters without seeing what you're doing. There has to be a damage. 
Wow. I see a problem with these counters. Okay, well, I'll just throw it away, but I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, heavy infantry is supposed to take damage on the other side, and these just give you quantities. Uh, maybe mercenaries can't be reduced. Anyway, I took the mercenary as the damage. I only had to take one point of damage, but I'm going to lose the mercenary anyway. And uh, capture Judea. But then from my minor moves, I repaired Judea, but I had a, uh, a garrison in this stack, so I built a town here. So now I'm in supply over here, and, you know, that solves my problems, basically. Yeah, with 25-year turns, it's not at all unreasonable what I, what I just did. And uh, on the other side, it's, you know, kind of cool that there are all these little clever things you can do. You're not going to screw yourself easily, is I guess what the, the, the key is here. Uh, it, it's, it's a nice feel for a game. Unfortunately, in all my excitement about the East, and then in the subsequent... Uh, Roman turn. I forgot to draw cards. So for the East I got a Bounteous Harvest. That works just like the other one. It came up nowhere useful. For the uh, Romans I got Pirates. They decided to put the Cilician Pirates into play. Um, <coughs> they don't think that really hurts the East right now, having no naval uh, supplies. It does prevent uh, it does block line of control for a naval space or point in all directions from Tarsus that don't have a galley. But I don't think that stops land uh, supply, which is what the East is actually doing. So I'm not sure how big an effect it is. Uh, I would be very disturbed if pirates... See, there are no naval transport points. That's part of the problem. Uh, normally what you do when you put a pirate in play is it just can't go through the naval transport point. Um, when brought into play, the block for one naval space point uh, in all directions. Well, there are no naval spaces. Mm. I don't know what they're trying to say here. Basically, I don't know if they're saying that these three spaces just cannot be used, which would be terrible for the East for line of communication. It'll cut their money, and I don't want to do that. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just bring a normal pirate into play somewhere. And let's just put it where? A naval transport point, an uncontrolled port, or Tarsus, if that port is not occupied by a player's galley. Just put them here. How about here? That looks more useful. Uh, that'll prevent the Greeks from really conducting any naval, or slow them from conducting any operations against the East as successfully. Make them cost a little bit more to work that way. Um, it looks as good as anything. And now I've paid, I also had to remember to pay the money. What did the Romans do? The Romans rebuilt their town. They figure they had one buck left after paying for their, uh, for their turn. And now let's see what the Greeks pull. Ooh. So the Greeks get a counter card. That's kind of cool. And they're going to try to do something uh, with Pyrrhus again. Because this is the, you know, this is the only time they have him is this turn. So yeah, whether they want to grab this. But eventually they may want to move against Rome itself. Yeah. It would be nice to just strip everything away from them, though, I guess. I don't know. At one point, I had seen this and misread it. It's if a full year transport begins an activation, not ends the turn uh, on a naval transport point, it can move on. Uh, the deep sea ones are the problem. But what is not uh, the case is that they're safe until uh, the end of the turn. So for, uh, at the end of the turn. So, for example, somewhere I just read it. Yeah, this is not easy. If a fleet stops in a non-friendly port or on a small circle, it must move by the end of the game turn or it is eliminated. So, 
I've done Pyrrhus. He's gone back, grabbed this. Now I'm looking at my minor moves and saying, ah, I kind of want to rebuild my city, whatever. Yeah, but I only have so many activations and I have quite a few fleets that are out in stupid places. And those are non-friendly ports right now, as far as I can tell. Uh, so I've got to pull my boats out and that's going to take a number of activities. And the pirates actually made those activities more difficult. I can sail here, pick this fleet up, sail along here, along this coast. I can't go to Rhodes without paying, I think. I don't know, I gotta go look the rules up on Rhodes. <sighs> Felt like I had gotten kind of to the point where I knew most of them, but nah, they're not there. I mean, you know, I've read them, but... Oh no, this naval movement is much more complicated than I thought. Uh, the stoppage happens every time you enter an unoccupied port not in your home territory. Uh, that's going to cause problems. So I was like this. I don't know if this is occupied. It's time to look up the definition of that. Yeah, it appears to be because there's something there. But now here comes my trouble. Going here, I have to make a roll. I have to make a continuation roll, and I'm going to have a hard time getting my fleets home. I think they're doomed. Uh, so I need a 2 through 7 to keep going. And then the same's going to happen when I enter here and here and here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I stopped. I can't move these guys again for this turn. Let's try to get these guys safe. Uh, Shit, where do I need to get them by the end of the turn? They just need to get home. I think Thassos is part of Greece. Byzantium is part of Thrace, but... Oh, I own that automatically. So I can go up here and I'll be safe. And that'll be my second uh, minor action. That was painful. I'm hungry. Okay, down to the last couple activations in the turn. Hopefully I can finish it all on this video. Maybe there's some end of turn stuff going that has to happen. Uh, Carthage, after paying and drawing, hey, I remembered, moves into Lusitania, finds themselves a tribe that they can probably overwhelm pretty easily. All right, and in an attempt to foil those plans, the Greeks paid their money, draw their card, Rebellion. What this is going to require is that I roll on this rebellion table up here, see where it happens, and then I see what the effect is. Uh, I got a 10 that's Judea. Uh-oh, somebody's there. Let's see what the effect of that is. We know the Jewish revolts could be pretty bad, so... Remove all garrisons in Judea and eliminate at least one BP of any type in addition to garrisons. Uh... Oh, there we go. The east wiped out. <clears throat> uh, place a barbarian infantry in any unoccupied space in Judea. Now, this is kind of controlled by the Greeks, I guess. Uh, it goes in an unoccupied city or town if one exists, and will use the city or town in defense. So, I'm guessing that now that this is unoccupied, they have taken this town. Uh, I need to get a barbarian infantry and I need to get a replacement town here. I don't know what happens to that leader. I'm not going to look it up because he's due to disappear anyhow. Um, as long as there's at least one Jewish BI on the map, units moving into Judea spend two movement points for each space entered. Alright, so the East went through a lot of effort to get that back, and, well, the Jews were not happy. Alright, I'm going to figure out what to do with Pyrrhus, because this is my last shot with him. I might as well spend him on an attack on Rome if need be. So, although Rome, uh had the advantage, a minus one ascent, or a one point advantage on their side. They were also holding this tactical surprise card which gives them two extra pips on a battle uh, on the battle dice. Uh, they chose not to play it because they had the advantage. The roll ended up really, really bad, like uh, a 6-1 combination or some such. And 
they ended up losing a double legion in exchange for a couple of strength points from the Soldier of Fortune. Now, uh, Paris still has some actions left. He can attack multiple times. So because of that, I took uh, the stability loss in order to grab a bunch more militia. I got a whole bonus three militia there. And it looks like Paris actually has a shot now after that die roll. Romans decided to use the card on the second part. You know, actually they were in pretty good shape. They had two to one odds again. Uh, but I decided the card just wasn't worth it. Another bad roll and bad things could happen. Pyrrhus got knocked down to where he's almost useless, but he did finish up with a final attack and wiped out the remainder of the Roman army, which is of some value. I mean, now the Romans have to build a new army to deal with the Greeks down there. The Greeks have a lot of problems on the board right now. though. All right, uh, I'm going to go look at what the kind of end of turn stuff is. Well, the first is determining isolation. These poor guys get destroyed during that. They were unable to make it home. I think they're a hard job to get home. It kind of enforces the Greeks to try to move uh, into the east so that they have some basis back here. Uh, as long as they had the garrison here, they were okay, but the Greek, uh, the Easterners kind of destroyed that and made it so that there was no safe haven. Uh, I have to look to see if any troops are out of supply. It doesn't look like there's going to be any attrition. I think everybody's in pretty good shape. I've got this guy to remove. He... with the other leader. But now what I have to do after that is a lot of bookkeeping stuff. Make sure all these numbers are correct for the next turn to see what there are. Get the victory points into play. Reshuffle the deck. Um, and then figure out by the victory points who's going to go first next turn. All right, well, I caught myself having kind of forgotten about doing stability changes when you gain and lose provinces. Uh, I tried to equate it, and I think this is where we are, because Syria gained a couple here, lost a couple points for Judea. Uh, Carthage gained one over here. The Greeks lost a couple of provinces here. They lost, uh, I don't think they had Asia Minor. They had, uh, they had Lycia, though, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I think I only charged them two, and they may have lost three, but I don't know if they had Lycia. Uh, they're down into the unrest zone. And Rome looks like they kind of broke even. The Greeks kind of broke even. They held Brutium. Uh, so, beyond that, I fixed all of these, and that was not a lot of work. Uh, I had some real fears that, you know, Counting everything up would be a pain. Counting these up would be a pain. I think it's a good idea to kind of try to keep track of them during the game, just to see, hey, who's ahead of me in, you know, GOP? Who's ahead of me in Civ? But on the other hand, it's fine not to keep track of them too, and it may be easier. Uh, so what we end up with is, yeah, I don't want to use that because I've got to flip through it, and I know I've got it right here. What we ended up with is people sitting. Let's see, let's assess the GOPs first. Uh, purple is first in GOP. They're gonna gain seven points for that, I believe. Now, here's what's tricky is you have to keep track of who gains the most victory points because they get a stability and who gains the least loses a stability. So it's almost like you need another marker briefly. That's okay, we can use uh, control marker or something. Uh, so they get that. Um, most, well, second most GOP looks like it's the Greeks. That'll be four. And third most is going to be the East. They get two. All right. Now, we do the Civ points. And the top there are the Greeks, and I think they give five for that. Second most. Looks like it's the east. That's worth four. Keeping kind of close, except for poor Rome, who is not doing well. But um, third is only worth one. Oh shit. Yeah, no, that's gonna be Carthage there, okay. That this chart, I hate this thing. I hate the way it's laid out. <laughs> uh okay. 
So that's where we have points now. We have additional stability. Rome got nothing. Cool. Rome's going to lose a point of stability because they didn't. They got the lowest victory points, and Greece actually gains one because they're doing the best right now. I think that's all there is for victory points. Nobody has an objective they want to show. The only person with one is the East, and they do not want to show it until they have it. Uh, so that's about where we are right now, and we're ready to push into the next turn. I've got uh, to determine order of play. That's going to be Greeks first, then Carthage, then the East, then Rome. The rest of the chips all go in here for next turn. The deck gets reshuffled, and up we go.